I'm, I'm hoping and I, my gut is that he will get over the line. But what, a, but what a position to be in to be talking about seats that weren't even in play, barely clinging on to them. Oh, there was only a 2% margin in Polworth. It was, we knew it was going to be very tough, even though um, the Libs were 2% ahead. Uh, and of course uh, we were worried about Torquay and Janjuk, which really swung against us in the okay. federal election and, in and, and, and talking of that region afterwards, we're going to have a look at Bellarine too, because I know you want to drill down into those figures. In the meantime, yeah. though, Mark Santo Martino is over at our mega election wall. TJ, Sarah might be happy with the way the Liberal Party is polling in queue, but elsewhere across Metro Melbourne, their primary vote is looking pretty bad. I showed you the state numbers before, just under 35%, but when it comes to Melbourne Metro, you can see there the coalition is on 31.2%. That is their primary vote in the city of Melbourne. That means it takes us to, or well, what that essentially says is that we're going to see seats changing hands within the city of Melbourne. A bad uh, a bad result for the coalition. The first seat I want to take you to is Glenn Waverley. Neil Angus has been a sitting MP for a long time. He was the only one who was said, who was told that he wouldn't be allowed to sit in Parliament when he wouldn't disclose his vaccination status. This one looks like it is going to the ALP and John Malahi. Next, I want to take you to Morwell. This is one of the seats that the National Party desperately wanted to win back from an independent. At the moment, Kate Maxfield, 45%. Martin Cameron, 54.8%. You would think that that is a National Party gain. And it is. We've called that one. And finally, I want to take you to Mildura. Ali Kappa has held this seat for the past four years. The National Party wanted it back and that is exactly what they are going to get in Jade Benham. A big swing to them, 53.7%. As you said, Charles, all the wins for the Coalition tonight are in that National Party column. To try and make sense of these numbers, we've been asking you online to help us out at 9news.com.au. We've got a number of polls up right now. Your answers to our questions will really help shape the story of this election. We asked, what was the main factor influencing your vote this election? These are your answers. At the top of the list, it wasn't health, it wasn't cost of living, and it wasn't Victoria's debt, but it was integrity. I'm very curious to know what you think about that, guys, because we know that Daniel Andrews has a number of anti-corruption investigations lingering over his head. Matthew Guy was referred to the VEC and then to IBAC himself. But if that is the top of that... Uh, of that column as to what Victorians care about the most, I can't say that we've seen that reflected in these votes tonight. Uh, although uh, the, the, the Greens and the Teals, and the uh, Teals. Melissa Lowe, uh, both said integrity. Mm. Both said integrity. Mm. So uh, whilst this is a great night for the ALP, I think both major parties surely would be taking out of this saying, OK, we, we have an image problem, we have an integrity problem. Both sides. Absolutely. Both the, of the major parties, yes. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The primary I vote strongly dropped. push back on the reference by the VEC to IBAC in relation to Matthew Guy. Um, there have been genuine concerns raised about the impartiality of the VEC. Mm. We know the Victorian Ombudsman is doing an inquiry into the politicisation of the public service in Victoria, where there is profound evidence that so many positions have been stacked. Now, I'm not saying that that's the case with the VEC Commissioner, uh, but uh, we, uh, we, as Liberals, have deep concerns. A very big difference to the multiple corruption inquiries in which Daniel Andrews is embroiled. Of course, we haven't seen the result of those inquiries, some of them being held over. I, who knows? But if this you, if, could go very, if, very badly for Daniel Andrews once those results. If come your out. main attack those, against, sorry, against those the Premier, if one of your attacks against the Premier is on integrity, why would Matthew Guy have any discussions with anyone about um, potential money coming from a Liberal donor? Well, I don't, just think that's the, uh, I don't think that's the uh, evidence, Alicia. Certainly, one of his staff members had some discussions, and there's some email evidence, but there was no deal, nothing was signed. And uh, Matthew Guy's made that very clear. But that's a, a really um, very different situation to the fact that we have the Premier of the state, sure. who obviously will be uh, re-elected, uh, embroiled in four corruption inquiries. We don't know the result of those inquiries. Uh, things could suddenly go very badly for Daniel Andrews in the weeks and months ahead. We don't know. Well, can but I just, just come to that? Just come to that, because 
Um, you know, Daniel got a lot of, the Premier got a lot of criticism because he didn't respond to questions about the IBAC inquiries. The fact is the law is very clear. If there's an IBAC inquiry and you're a member of the public or you're the Premier or you're a Minister and you are advised that you are to give evidence, you are not allowed to tell anybody about that. You can't tell your partner about it, you can't tell your Chief of Staff about it, you can't tell anybody about it. It's a breach of the law, it's a contempt. You can't tell anybody whether you were interviewed or whether you weren't interviewed. You can't tell anybody what the nature of the inquiry was. I don't know what the nature... He might be completely incidental to these. Yeah. I, I've been interviewed, not by IBAC, but in the old days by the Ombudsman, who in those days, George Brower's day, had IBAC-type powers, mm. and it's quite an intimidating experience. You are, not to get, you are not allowed to get legal counsel, you are not allowed to comment, you are not allowed to confirm, you are not allowed to deny. So I just want to make the point there, you know, the fact that you are interviewed doesn't, doesn't mean that you've done anything wrong at all, mm. but you are completely unable to defend yourself because you can't confirm or deny, you can't okay. say a thing about right. it, right? Okay. So, all right. Well, we'll, 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 we'll no, we won't come back to that particular topic because it will play out in time yeah. to come. But I guess, you know, the mere fact that you're talking about corruption, integrity and everything else, that's where the two major parties have uh, an image problem in, in this state. And I think that's uh, shown to be correct with the, uh, the Teals and also the Greens All doing right, as well as what they have. We'll get on to some numbers now. Let's get back to the seat of Bellarine. Uh, what are we seeing at this stage, Charles? Well, this is the one, of course, uh, Lisa Neville retiring very popular there and that is hurting the Labor uh, result down 8.1%. 1%, although that's a, a pretty standard uh, result for a, a popular sitting member. Isn't but, it? The, but, but look, I mean, the Greens are up 5%. Yeah, uh, five. Five um, the 2PP on that's going to be 54, 55, oh, 57, Even better. right? <laughs> so, like, like, that's a great result. And again, back in the... Back in the 2000s, so like Lisa Neville had been a very, very effective and popular local member. So Alison's been a great replacement. She'll get elected tonight. Whenever you move from the older member to the new, there's always a bit of that personal vote. So that's a great result for the Labor Fracking Party. Fracking well, debate would come into it there, wouldn't well, it? Well, I, I just want to make this point. Um, there is no substitute for hard work yeah. when you're running as a candidate. And look, this was a reasonably safe Labor seat. Donnie Grigal, who's a local businessman, runs a local restaurant in Queenscliff, yeah. did a really good job. He had a swing in his favour. I mean, 8% against Alison Martian is, yeah. is not good. And John, let's not forget that Lisa Neville was the police minister. OK, Sarah, we need to move on to South Byron. Right. Swing, okay. swing, swing. I mean, at the end favour. of the day, I hear what you're saying about Donnie, but he lost. Yeah. All right, let's take and a look swings, at how Darren well, Cheeseman yeah. is swings going. Swings in your favour. Darren Cheeseman's got 7.2%. Well, South Byron is going to turn into a, a safe seat. He's going to disappoint you, Sarah, I yep. think. No, I'm, I think I'm, I'm disappointed by this result. I think he probably gets the final word tonight. <laughs> yep. No, this is not a good result wow. in South Bar. Jeez, that okay. is nine okay. percent no, swing on uh, two party. That's now safe. All right, let's no move on to Geelong.